So let's look a little more at how metapopulations can play a role in the persistence of species. And we'll start with an example from the Florida Keys. This is Linum arenicola, the sand flax, <clears throat> a beautiful little plant that's kind of hard to find in big clumps of grass where it tends to grow because its tiny flowers are less than a centimeter in size. If the probability of extinction is greater than the probability of immigration, we would expect to see lots of blinking off. And if that species were represented by a single population, it might easily go extinct. But with multiple patches, the probability of extinction overall is much reduced. Because the more patches, you multiply those probabilities of extinction together, and that number gets smaller. For any population, we could look at P sub n, the probability of no extinction for n years in a row, <clears throat> and that is equal to 1 minus P sub e, the probability of extinction, to the nth power. So for x patches, a certain number of patches, P sub x is equal to 1 minus the probability of extinction to the x power. So the probability increases rapidly as more patches are added, the probability of persisting. And there's an overall decrease as the probability of extinction increases as well. So the bottom line is multiple patches spread the risk of extinction. Using this little model from Gotelli's book, the fraction of sites occupied could be symbolized with f, and this number varies between 0 and 1. If f is 1, every site has the population present. If it's 0, <clears throat> none do. We have a regional extinction. So f, the fraction of sites occupied, changes because of immigration and extinction, patches blinking on and off. So df dt is equal to immigration minus extinction, kind of like birth and death rates and little r. So if p sub i is the probability of local colonization, that depends on the fraction of sites occupied. So immigration is equal to the probability of local colonization times 1 minus the proportion of sites occupied, the fraction. So this would be nothing if the probability of colonization is zero, or if all of the sites were already occupied, f equals one. So for df dt, a change in the fraction of sites occupied is equal to the probability of immigration, or immigration minus extinction, as defined by these equations. This model assumes, of course, that all the patches are the same. There's no spatial structure, no time lags, constant probability of extinction and immigration, and also a large number of patches, even more than you might see in a patchwork quilt. Again, the variations can involve the rescue effect with sites more likely to be occupied if they're closer to another, other occupied sites. This is similar to isolation by distance in genetics. Some models assume that only nearest neighbors exchange migrants in a one-dimensional array. This would be along this line in two dimensions, just adjacent to each other, nothing crossing the middle. But then there's the island model that assumes all exchanges are possible between any islands, and even this one. So let's look at this question again. Why are metapopulations important? If we consider two populations, one and two, each has its own separate probability of extinction or blinking out. Let's say for each of these it's 0.7. If we combine them, we multiply those together, so it's 0.49. So the chances that we lose both populations is diminished by 21%.
So how do you know if a species is functioning as a metapopulation? It depends on the local versus regional extinction patterns. Regional extinction is usually preceded by local extinctions. Lifetime of habitat is important, as well as dispersal characteristics of the organism, the distance of the patches from one another, and how frequent the species is. To show and know, you can use direct methods like marking and recapturing done with animals. Plants are easy for this technique using genetic markers to see, to detect movement among patches. Indirect methods are using genetic markers and looking also even over a greater uh, area over species incidence and changes over time. So why might species go extinct? It might be that too much inbreeding and loss of genetic diversity leads to their extinction through stochastic uh, disaster reasons. Demographic stochasticity of just chance fluctuations in birth and death. Environmental stochasticity, things that happen that eliminate populations. Catastrophes on a larger scale like hurricanes or whatever. And it might be that Conditions change so that safe sites or refuges are eliminated so that that central core population can no longer persist. So habitat fragmentation often results in less habitat available, affecting regional and local distributions, and can also promote extinction of species. Ilka Hansky pointed out four kinds of species with respect to number and uh, fraction of occupied patches. Core species are those that have a large population size and occupy lots of patches. Satellite species, small numbers and occupancy. Rural species, small numbers but large occupancy throughout the landscape and urban species with large numbers but only a few patches occupied. So these last three categories are all different kinds of being rare in this classification. In Hansky's core and satellite species hypothesis, local abundance correlates with the regional distribution of species, and this leads to the loss of important species with fragmentation. One um, example of a long-term, very interesting project on this subject was done in Brazil in the Biological Dynamics of Forest, Forest Fragments project, where deforestation was taking place and scientists from the World Wildlife Fund were able to make a deal for certain pa forest patches of certain sizes and distances from each other were left. And then scientists of all different kinds sense the species um, richness and abundance of whatever organism they were lit interested in in the intact area as well as patches of different sizes and different degrees of isolation from this main area. With many species, they saw what Ralstad saw is that reduced connectivity of the habitat lowers dispersal rate and immigration. And the smaller the fragment size, the greater the extinction rate, the fewer species would persist there. This is because fragmentation increases edge an edge makes the habitat deteriorate near the edge, so there's less good habitat. And this indir all these things indirectly affect the mortality rate of the species concerned. 
Peter Kariva came up with an interesting idea of the threshold effect, which probably affects a lot of plant populations, where viable habitat is destroyed little by little, and we might see many species persisting, but perhaps if their pollinators and seed dispersers are no longer there, they may eventually go extinct. Dave Tillman described this as an extinction debt, the lag time and time of response by communities. And in fact, when he visited Miami and looked at our Pine Rockland fragments, he said that probably they were going to pay the, an extinction debt in the future. Because without mutualist partners, ancient individuals won't be able to replace themselves. And so extinction may be accelerating in many habitats. I hope not, but that's probably the case.